These are lightsabers from Savvy's Workshop at Walt Disney World in Orlando, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. If you get the chance to go to Galaxy's Edge and do this, I would not pass it up. If you are a Star Wars fan, the experience of seeing your kids put together their own lightsaber and picking the color and lighting it up for the first time after they assemble it is amazing. Um, and the actors that are all there that help, and there's one guy that kind of runs you through it and gives this whole spiel, and it was an amazing experience and I cannot recommend it enough. These things are uh, expensive, but amazing. And we don't really have a place to put them. So I wanna make some sweet lightsaber holders that are worthy of the awesomeness of these lightsabers. And for the lightsabers, I wanna make each holder unique to its particular hilt. But my kids chose different ones, and with the options that you get, you get these sweet little pins I thought it would be cool to try and make the holders that these will fit into kind of mimic this or look like this. And then I think I'm gonna try to do some epoxy fill in the lines and maybe add some lights, make it cool, make it glow. And also, at Walt Disney World, you can also get these holocrons. A Jedi holocron and a Sith holocron. But anyway, I wanted to put on the holders maybe a spot a little shelf to hold both of these and then maybe some holes that will hold the kyber crystals to put those on display as well. All right, so with all that being said, let's make some lightsaber holders. All right, let's go. So here I'm just trying to lay out the lightsaber and try to get the sizing correct for the backer. And then I'm gonna try to match the design of the pin for the backer as well. So you know when you think something through in your head and it seems simple and then you draw it on paper and it's like, oh, this is way more complicated? Yeah. So I'm only going to be able to bandsaw out the outer perimeter. All these other pieces are going to have to be drilled and scroll sawed. So I switched to the scroll saw because it allows me to do inside cuts. So all those drill holes that I made, I can detach the blade from the saw, slide it through one of the holes, reattach the blade, and then make the cut, and then repeat that 32 times. And then here I'm using a Dremel tool to really rough the piece up and add some gouges. Kind of want this thing to look like it's ancient and like it came out of an old Jedi temple. All right, onto the shelf. Here I'm just trying to lay things out, make sure I have the right sizing, and make sure my Jedi and Sith holocrons are gonna fit on the shelf. To make the inside cuts here, I decided to use the bandsaw. I could have used the scroll saw, but sometimes I feel it's just easier to just cut away the one piece, cut out your holes, like my square and triangle holes, and then just take that first cutaway piece and re-glue it back in place. And this thing's gonna get sanded and painted, so nobody is ever gonna be able to see your cut line anyway. All right, All right. so I have this piece cut for the shelf and I don't really know what to do, so this is gonna be full of epoxy and I kinda of wanna light it up from the bottom. So I'm kinda of think I'm gonna use a second piece that's about the same size and try to make a box where I'll have lights kind of on this base that will shine up through and then I'm gonna trim it out with some pieces and then figure out a way to decorate that and make that look cool too. All right, just to make this a little bit cooler, we're gonna take the front piece of the lightsaber shelf and we are going to put this Star Wars lingo across the front. This is Arabish or whatever it's called. And uh, this says Elemental Nature, which is one of the lightsaber types that you can get at Savvy's Workshop at Galaxy's Edge. All right, let's do it.
First I line everything up with my tape measure just so I can get all the spacing of the letters right. Then I just go through and hand draw all of them on there. I don't really care if these are perfect because again I kind of want this thing to look ancient. And then I just come back through with my little wood burner tool and wood burn everything right into the wood. Here I'm making the upper shelf, which is kind of a U-shaped design. This will act as a place for the lightsaber to actually fit down inside of, and also kind of a shelf that will have some holes drilled into it and will house the kyber crystals. I don't like sand. It's coarse and rough and irritating, and it gets everywhere. For stain, I'm using some old red oak that I had on hand, made it look kind of aged and cool. And then I just use a Q-tip and the sponge brush as best I can to get inside all the holes and the nooks and crannies to try and fill it with stain. This is tuck tape, and I'm using it so that I can do my resin pour. I just cover the back of the shelf and the back of the backer, and then I can fill everything with resin and not have it all leak out from any of the holes. The resin and the pigment that I'm using is just cheap stuff that I bought off Amazon. I might have to upgrade the next time I do one of these. I also got these little syringes off Amazon. You can get a 15 pack for a few bucks, but definitely come in handy when you're trying to fill in little gaps like this and you don't want to spill the epoxy all over the top of your piece. I finished up one thin pour, and then I came back and mixed another batch the next day and did one more layer. The tuck tape worked awesome, but getting it off there, not so easy. That's not ideal. Getting the red residue behind. It's gonna be fun. With the piece all cleaned up, then it was just time to assemble the whole thing and get it all put together. So, I have these neon flexible strip lights that I'm going to try to adhere to the back. I think I'm going to do one loop around and then I'm going to try to loop some around here and this will slide in. It'll slide in. Pin nail it in there. Call it good. No idea if these are going to stick or not so I'll try it once without glue and see what happens. Once I open the package I quickly realized that these lights don't have any kind of stickers on them at all. So on to a new solution but first lights. Whoa! That was delayed. That's brightest. That's crazy awesome. Alright. After getting down in the dark room and realizing how bright these are, we are just going to attach them that way, facing against the wall, and then it'll shine back through those and look pretty cool. Since there was no adhesive on these neon lights, I quickly found a new solution. At the local hardware store, I got some of these coax cable staples, and they fit perfectly over these neon strips. Oh, it looks great. Let's get a lightsaber on the wall. Alright, so we're gonna hang the lightsaber. 
the lightsaber will sit inside the holder like so, but see, too wobbly. So to solve the wobble problem, we have this 3D printed clip and we're going to use the back of a command strip that I've cut off to fit and we're just going to stick him on the wall so that he can clip onto the blade like that and then be solid. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. This project turned out super awesome. I could not be happier. Got to do all sorts of different things here with this. Woodworking, scroll saw, wood burning, and my first ever resin pour. And most importantly, hopefully now the lightsaber isn't going to be left laying around on the floor to break. Hopefully. If you guys like this project, I've got one more lightsaber holder that's well underway and that video should be coming out in the next couple weeks, so subscribe to the channel. Also got all kinds of other Star Wars projects, nerdy stuff, stuff for the house, stuff for the wood shop. If you like that kind of thing, check out the channel. Alright, that's it for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you on the next one.